Cool. So it is the top of the hour. So let's get started. I have a brief presentation for you guys. Um, and by the way, my name is Spencer. I'm the Chief Product Officer here at Chronometer.com. Um, thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, yeah, so I, like I said, I have a quick presentation for you guys, and then we're going to go through and uh, take a look at the app and all of our great gold features. So what are we going to cover today? <clears throat> we are going to be doing this brief introduction. I have a little bit of housekeeping for you guys, uh, a little bit of information. Uh, and then um, once we get through that, we're just, just going to jump right into the demo, uh, go through all of our uh, gold features in the app. I'm going to be demoing them both on the web app and the mobile app. Um, I also have a few advanced features that are part of the free account, but you may not know about them. Uh, really good techniques to get uh, the most out of the app. I'll show you guys those as well. And then as we go, there's a little Q&A button on your, um, on your webinar UI. Uh, if you want to pop open the queue, you can add your question, and I will get to that as we go through the webinar. I'll just pause for questions here and there. So some housekeeping. Um, we don't give any um, personalized nutrition recommendations. So if you guys are looking for personalized advice, I would recommend uh, working with a healthcare professional. And uh, as it happens, we actually have a professional version of Chronometer that uh, coaches, trainers, and dietitians and doctors use in their personal practices. And so we actually have a directory on our website that you can go and find a practitioner who's using Chronometer in their practice. And so I'll show you guys that towards the end of the webinar. Um, yeah, and so feature requests. I'm not going to uh, address any feature requests here in the webinar, but after the webinar, we have, uh, we have um, a survey that'll uh, come out to you guys. And uh, not only will you be able to give us some feedback, feedback on how we did, but you can tell us uh, some of those features that you want to see in the app to make your experience better. So that's the place to, to do that. I probably won't deal with those on the app here or on the webinar here. Uh, yeah, and then if you have any follow-up questions, uh, you can always reach out to support at chronometer.com. We're very responsive. Uh, and yeah, you should, we should be able to answer any questions you might have for us. And finally, um, we, do, uh, we do a webinar uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They're all different. There's a basics webinar, the gold webinars today, and then our professional webinars tomorrow. All of those replays, uh, we generally put them up on our YouTube channel uh, at the start of the following week. So if you guys missed something, or maybe I've, I've been accused of talking a little fast. So uh, you can go there to review anything uh, that you see here that you might miss. Um, yeah, so that is that. Now I did mention, uh, oh actually no, so what's next? So what I want to do here is I really want to frame our discussion around why use Chronometer uh, to achieve your health and fitness goals. Uh, Chronometer, has the, Chronometer has the highest quality, most accurate data of any tracking application out there. Uh, we track over 80 micronutrients and we've really built uh, the app around understanding all that data that's coming in from your food. And uh, in order to do that, we also have these built-in data analysis tools that allow you to make sense of that data, not only on the day-to-day -day basis, but you know, over longer periods of time too. And these go the gold features especially support this. And because Chronometer really focuses on those micronutrients, the, basically the building blocks of any healthy diet, no matter you know, what, what style of eating you like, you're gonna find that Chronometer is customizable to just about any style of eating. And finally, we're secure. So we believe that you, the user, owns your own data. And uh, you know, we also build the app around this principle. So <clears throat> we use end-to-end -end encryption. At any point in time, you can just delete your uh, data from the system uh, and you know, delete your account. Obviously, we hope you don't do that. Uh, but uh, you can if you want to. Um, we never sell your data to any third parties. And uh, we also follow uh, HIPAA guidelines and GDPR, we're GDPR compliant. Now, uh, we also just introduced a new security feature called two-factor authentication. So if you want to, um, to enable that in your settings, which I'll show you guys how to do, uh, you can then uh, turn that on and make your account even more secure. So yeah, so that's just one of our principles, something we have, we've always kind of built into the app. <clears throat> so I mentioned we have, have a professional version as well. 
Um, and these are a few of the larger organizations that use Chronometer Pro uh, as part of their uh, programs. And that could be anything from you know, hospitals running their nutrition programs with their patients to uh, larger institutions that are doing academic and clinical research using Chronometer. And they do that because they trust our data. Uh, and, and we've been able to build some really solid relationships, relationships over the past couple of years uh, because of um, the services that we offer. But we're not just only, you know, we, we, we work with all, all kinds of professionals from the, the trainer to the coach and the individual practice as well. So that's the end of my presentation. Let's just start that. Um, so what we're going to, what we're looking at here right now is the mobile app and our web app here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the web app. I'm going to go through all of our gold features on each screen, and then I'm going to jump over to the web app and I'm going to, uh, kind of show you where those gold features can be found in the UI on the mobile app. Cause it's very different. It's two very different places if you're depending on which one you use. So uh, let's get started. So up top here, we have a couple different gold features that I wanna show you. First with the, with the diary layout. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll notice, well actually right here in the food log, I'll start. You'll notice when you've, when you've upgraded to gold, uh, you have the ability to enable uh, diary groups. So I think they're enabled by default and they do some default set of categories like breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks, something like that. Um, these can actually be customized to any kind of template that you want. So the way you would do that, so if I go to settings and I go to display, and then I scroll down here, there's a section called diary groups. Now you can see I have up to eight categories here that I can customize. So if I wanted to turn on uh, extra groups and then I can edit those names uh, however I like, and those can contain and help you just keep your diary a little bit more organized. So we'll take a quick look at what that looks like in the diary. And yeah, you can see now I have a few extra categories here in addition to the ones I already had. You can go back and you can edit those things, turn them on and off, and just basically create the template for the day that you want to follow. Uh, so then scrolling down just a little bit, another feature of ours that's gonna be enabled um, Oh, for sure, oh, we'll get to that, yep. Um, another feature that will be enabled by default once you upgrade to gold is this right here called our nutrition scores. So what the nutrition scores are is a, uh, basically, what, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but when I think about my diet, I don't necessarily think about uh, my diet in terms of individual micronutrients. Uh, did I get enough folate? Did I, did I get enough B12? What I, what I tend to think in, in is, is, is those concepts that are relevant to my health. So for example, did I you know, eat enough or eat right to recover from training, to support my immune system? So what we did is we grouped nutrients into their functions. And uh, now you can see at a high level how you're doing with your eating in terms of supporting various functions within your body. So immune support being probably the most relevant one right now, if we click on that, just zoom out, you're gonna get a dialog box here showing you all the nutrients that are involved in this particular function. And then you can see how well you're scoring on each individual nutrient. So it's a great way to get just a high level overview of what you are, um, or how your nutrition's going. Um, now there's another one here that I wanna point out is data quality. So that's not necessarily one that's gonna you know, help your health, but uh, this will tell you based on what you've logged up here, how uh, like how high quality uh, the data is that you've actually that you're actually getting out of those food items. So if you've joined us for our previous webinar, oftentimes when you search out a food item, particularly if it's a store bought item that has its data coming from the food manufacturer, the food manufacturers are not uh, required by law to really give us much information. So you're going to see that a lot of the nu uh, nutrients that we track, there's no data for them. But if you're using high quality data entries that we have either curated ourselves or pulled in from uh, these really high quality databases, 
um, you will see a pretty high quality data score. So basically the rule of thumb is if you see a low quality, a low data quality score, if this is one of the scores you've selected to display, um, then you might be, you might not be getting accurate nutrition information because the quality of data of the items that you've logged is fairly low. So that's one way to kind of um, just, it's like a, it's a flag to just make sure that you're, um, that you're not throwing to, to make sure that you're getting the, the data that you need in order to, you know, get the insights that you want on your diet. So where you would edit those is the same place you go to diary groups. You go settings, display, and then you go down to just below diary groups, nutrition scores. So you can come in here and see which ones we have. And we're um, always adding more uh, slowly. We do a bit of research on each of these categories and these functions. And so uh, we wanna make sure that they're as accurate as possible. So, uh, you know, that list will grow as time goes on, but these are the ones you can choose from right now. And if you don't wanna see them, you can always just turn them off. Now, at the bottom of your diary screen, you're gonna see these nutrient balances. This is another feature that gets turned on by default when you upgrade to gold. And so what you're gonna see here is the, uh, there are several nutrients uh, that you wanna have a correct ratio of within your body. And the most common, most well-known perhaps is the omega-3 to 6 ratio, which is the first one on the, on the um, left there. And what, you know, those are basically just ratios that need to be in balance in order to, for optimal health. And we give you a sense of what those look like at any given point during your day. Cool. So back to the top here, uh, we are going to go look at uh, add biometric. So when you're adding biometrics, you know, we have a set list. Uh, weight, height, heart rate, a number of other ones that we track just by default on the free account. But when you have a gold account, one thing that you can do is you can actually use this feature here called add custom biometric. And so what you do is you can come in here and you can type in a name, you can type in a unit, and then you can enter a value. And then that biometric will be saved and you can go and log it anytime you want. So what does that exactly mean? So you could track pretty much any piece of data in chronometer that you want. So for example, let's say you're tracking a medical condition and you know, your symptoms uh, might flare up at certain points during the day. You can track your symptom flare ups throughout the day. So if you were to say, you know, maybe it's a scale of one to 10 uh, you know, in terms of severity of symptoms, you can start to track those things throughout the day and, uh, or, and, and over time uh, and see how they might correlate with changes in your diet, exercise, or other factors, and get a sense of how those things are affecting you. So it's a really powerful tool uh, if you're interested in tracking uh, uh, different types of data about yourself. And then once, you know, once you've created it, you can actually, oops, you can actually, they'll show up down here. You can see uh, I have uh, my pain scale. So I have my scale, I can set that up. Maybe it's one to 10 and I can add that to my diary. I'll just drag that up here. So uh, again, really powerful tool. Uh, it's only available on gold counts. Another uh, addition to what you can log with our add note feature when you're a gold account is, uh, oops, there we go. So when you click add note here, uh, you're gonna see this little camera icon uh, down in the bottom right. And what you can do is if you click on this, you're gonna be able to upload a photo to the, um, to the diary, uh, to the note itself. So you can add a note, you can add a photo. So if you wanna take pictures of your food or if there's you know, some inspiring meme you wanna post on that day, you can do that. And then you'll be able to refer to it later, download the photo uh, and do whatever you need to do. Then we also have a couple extra little hidden features here in our three dot menu. So if you click on this, you're gonna see a uh, clear all amounts uh, option here. Uh, now what normally, what, or so what this does is this is for use with our other options like copy previous day and copy current day. These allow you to paste entire days to uh, different days in the, in the diary. So if you're, 
basically eating the same thing or you're following a very specific template, you don't have to go and search for all the things that you want uh, in the day. So instead, you can copy and paste. So I think I have a day, yep, I do have a day all set up here. What I can do, let's say I've copied this day from the previous day, I can just click clear all amounts. And now instead of having to go and edit each of these things, they're all set to zero. I can now go through as I eat it throughout the day and I can just fill in whatever the uh, amount I ate uh, were and then I can, um, I can get my nutrition information for the day. Another feature that we have that's still in this food log area here is if you multi-select foods, you can do that by holding down shift and clicking each food. When you right click, you'll get a little menu here. And one of the options here that's gonna be available to you is the create recipe from selected items. So this is great if you know you kind of throw together a breakfast and it turns out to be awesome. You know, you want to you want to save that meal again and you don't want to necessarily find each individual item. You can just create a recipe from these selected items. So if I click that, now we go right to the recipe editor, and you can see all the items in the amounts uh, that I had selected there are now added to this recipe. I can, I can save that and uh, create a recipe out of it. It's great for um, what I'm gonna show you in a little bit, or, uh, which is creating daily meal plans uh, with our recipe editor. This is a nice little piece um, and it makes it super easy to do. So again, you can highlight the items that you want, you can package them up in a recipe and then you don't have to spend so much time uh, adding those things as you go, or individually. But we'll come back to the recipe editor in a bit. So let's see, next I wanna show you guys, oh yeah, oh, you'll notice as a matter of fact, another thing about custom biometrics and our, the, the items in the diary in general is you're gonna notice here, I don't know if you can see it very well, but our data, once you've upgraded to gold, is now gonna be timestamped. So this is really important if you're tracking custom biometrics, you can actually see how things are changing minute to minute. And so what'll happen, is if we go up here to add food, I'll go ahead and pick a, an item here. Now, just in this, just above the kind of choose your serving size and the add button, you're gonna see a time of day. So you can click on that to edit it. We just generally will take whatever the device, the current device time is. And you can um, set that or just let it go depending on when you're logging it. Um, and then what'll happen is you uh, will take that timestamp, put it on the data, and then we can use that later on in the app uh, using our charts, features, and other spots. So, um, and also you have this diary group here. So when you're logging food, uh, you can actually, well, that's a good question. So a meal timestamp. Oh, actually, so what you can do, so, so not exactly, Susie, that's a great question. So can you do a, a timestamp per meal? So what you can do is, uh, and we don't have this feature yet, it's coming out and I think on our, in our next release in just, in just a couple of weeks, but you can actually bulk edit timestamps. So if you have a group of food that's all, um, uh, you know, it all, it's all eaten in one meal, you can set that timestamp to the exact time that you ate. And that way you, you'll get the same effect because you'll see all that information at that single time. So you're going to get the same effect, but we don't have a specific meal. However, you could create a custom biometric saying your meal time and it would have a timestamp and you could even put it in as a custom biometric too. So um, it's all possible. <laughs> um, right. So that is uh, time stamping of the data. Now, another really cool feature um, that I'm going to show you is uh, the suggest food feature. So this is really cool. Uh, what we do, so you'll notice on this, um, on this uh, food log here, on this account, I have, uh, you know, I still have quite a few um, calories to eat to hit my energy target. I still have quite a few of each of the macros to, to eat in order to hit those targets. So what we do is when you click this suggest food button right here, what we do is we look at all of that the macro information, your calorie information, even all of your micronutrition information down here, all the targets you haven't hit yet. What we do is we will then look at our database and suggest the foods that will most efficiently get you to hit those targets. So we'll take a look at what it actually looks like. If I click suggest foods, 
Let's see what's happening. This is weird. Oh, oh, there we go. Just hanging. I'm getting hit with some lag right now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> right. Let's try that again. So, suggest food. So now we're kind of building that list for you. And uh, once it's built, you're going to see exactly the, the nutrition you're going to get out of each of these foods. So, uh, yeah. Take it a minute, take it a minute. Yes, it will. So, Michael, I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. So, okay, so here we go. So now we have our food list, our food, our suggested food list. So what you're looking at is up top, I'll just scroll up to the top. I had plenty of space in that in carbs and protein, and this is a ketogenic account anyway. So spinach is a great food for that. So you'll see how much, uh, how, like what the macro breakdown is here. You're also going to see the total, so this number, this 12% here, that purple number, that is the percentage of your total targets that you will, uh, that you will hit by eating this food. So that'll add 12% towards that progress, that total progress. And then uh, it, it talks about one cup, uh, 180 grams. That's the amount that we're basing it on. Uh, you can always add that to your diary and then edit that amount later. Uh, and then you're gonna see the nutrients that are most abundant in this particular food item that are relevant to your, your targets. Uh, and so you can like this food. So I'll get this suggestion again uh, as I uh, do future searches. I can dislike the food so it won't show up in my, um, in my suggestions again. I can, if I just want to cycle through a bunch of different, um, a bunch of different options, I can just click the X button and it'll just keep cycling through a whole list of foods that will best fill out my, nutri uh, my nutrient targets. The other thing, so uh, Michael had asked, will it consider the diet? So yes, we can actually uh, do a number of different types of restrictions. So you'll see here in the right, or on the left here, there's an all foods option. You can click on that and you're gonna be able to switch that to vegetarian or you can switch it to vegan only foods. So we have a number of food items in our uh, database that are tagged as vegan only or vegetarian friendly or what have you. And you can filter on those as well. Now, you also have the ability to exclude uh, certain types of foods as well. So you can exclude seafood, nuts and dairy, some pretty common allergens. You can exclude supplements. So if you wanna be getting your, your, your uh, uh, nutrition from whole foods, you can exclude those there. And any custom recipes that you have created will probably have a lot of great nutrition information. You can always filter those out as well if you want. But, uh, you know, so like I, I, so I look at this and I think to myself, you know, I, you know, if I'm like hungry for dinner and I click on, you know, what to eat using the suggest food uh, engine, um, you, you know, it's going to be like, well, wait, I don't necessarily have, what is it, uh, soybeans in my fridge right now. Uh, so, you know, you may have to run to the store, but it's really what it is. It's a great planning tool. If you are planning out your diet, you're not sure what to eat to kind of fill out the rest of that perfect day. You can use this uh, suggest food engine to um, just get some great suggestions and, you know, fill out that grocery list when you actually have to go shopping. Um, and in conjunction with our meal planning uh, uh, trick, it's not really a feature, I guess. It's, it's something available to everybody. It's kind of a trick we, we show people. Uh, on these webinars, but in conjunction with that, it's a super powerful tool. So we're going to get to that in just a second. So uh, Michael, you asked about carnivore. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you can, you can, uh, so we don't explicitly filter on ca the carnivore diet in the food suggestions list, but uh, all you, like, that's just a matter of, you know, liking and disliking certain foods. And that way uh, you'll pretty much narrow it down to the, um, the, the, meats that you'll be eating on that diet. So, uh, right, there we go. So that is the food suggestion engine. Really, really powerful stuff. So I think, oh man, I, so usually I have uh, our, our uh, customer service, um, uh, Mary Ev, our head of customer service on the webinar with me. She usually tells me what gold features I'm forgetting when it comes to what's on the diary screen because there's so many here. Uh, I don't have her with me today, so I might be forgetting something. Okay, well, sh sure enough I am. So we have a fasting widget here. So we actually, as a, as a part of your gold subscription, 
we can track fasting. Um, and I'm just going to, sorry, one sec, guys. I'm just going to clear out a couple of these questions so I can see them coming in there. Uh, done, done. Yeah, so, yeah, Michael, this, yeah, so we have, we do support tracking fasting. So uh, in a little bit, I'll show you how to set one up. Um, but one of the things that will happen is when you have your, um, and I'm showing you on the um, mobile app as well, when you set up a fast, you can actually see it uh, in our in the, in the diary where you're at in it. You can edit it. You can um, uh, you can stop it. All those kinds of things. And what's really cool about our fasting feature is that you can actually uh, see it visualized on the charts. So all your fasting periods will show up on the charts, overlaid on top of your data, so you can see how those things affect uh, you know what's going on with you. Um, and since I'm talking about it, I'll just jump right into it. So if, if you go to settings. You go to fasting, you can go over here, you can click on enable fasting, and that'll give you the ability to create fast. It'll show the widget in the diary. And then you click on schedule new fast. <clears throat> uh, you can set a name, you can set that duration, and then you can say, you know, how often you want it to repeat. Maybe you're doing daily intermittent fasting, set it to daily. Maybe you want to do it every couple weeks, you can set it to every couple weeks, and uh, you can also alter the start and end time over here as well. So, um, yeah, sure, that's a great question, I'll answer that. Uh, so, so yeah, so that's generally how you would set up a fast, it's super easy, uh, so you can add that, and we'll show you your scheduled fasts up here, and then your historic fast will be down here. Now, on this account, I've had pretty much a constant fast running for the past couple months, so we'll see what that actually looks like, although impractical, on the charts in just a bit when we get there. Uh, so, Susie was asking, um, yeah, uh, there's a lot of colors going on down here. There's purple, there's yellow, there's green. So the, um, so what we do is we do all those different colors to give you an idea. Um, I can save this. Yeah. So basically what we do is we use the color coding to give you a, a, an easy way to just glance over everything and key in on the things that might be important. So for example, if we go down to the, um, the list of micronutrients down here, you can see I have a lot of yellow. The yellow, all that means is that you haven't hit the minimum yet. Uh, so I haven't hit that minimum target that I want to try to hit every day. And since I'm only, you know, this account, uh, you know, he's only through lunch, that's probably fine. He's got dinner and a few snacks to deal with as well. Um, if it's green, that means you're within the target range. So you've hit that minimum, you haven't gone over yet. And so that's good. That's where you're at. Uh, but if you see a red gauge up here, that means you have gone over the maximum allowable threshold. Uh, so that's, that's generally bad, depending on what you're trying to achieve. Now, the purple gauges, uh, these don't have any kind of color code associated with them. They're just different because we don't want to interfere with our uh, color coding down here. So there you go. Uh, boom. Done. Uh, we'll get to the Oracle. Uh, how do you see fast overlay on charts? Michael, we will get to that. Uh, we'll get to charts just after I show you how to do some meal planning. Uh, why purple? Uh, you know what? I <laughs> it's a good question. I'll have to ask our designer. Uh, I think it just stood out uh, considering we're using so many different colors to represent macros and progress through macros, your burned calories and uh, all these different uh, targets for your micros as well. So. Yeah, that's we, we've got a lot of colors going on, and that's just uh, one of the challenges that we have to deal with. Why purple? Yeah, I, I, not a great answer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so William, we're going to go through custom recipes. I just want to make sure I got everything done on this diary page. I'm going to show you guys how to do this stuff on the mobile app now before we move on to custom recipes. Um, yep, yep, yep. That one. Oh yeah, uh, date for, oh, um, oh well, so no, Susie, I was saying that you can, so when you, when you log a bunch of food, so let's say I have breakfast here, right? Um, I can log all this food in breakfast. You can actually go in and edit it so it's the same exact time, all the foods, and that'll basically get you what you want in terms of having a specific meal time. What I was saying earlier, though, was that uh, we have a feature that's coming out. It's not out yet, so I can't show you. Uh, that you can just bulk edit timestamps. So you could theoretically uh, click breakfast, 
right click on this and then edit the, all the timestamps so you get your meal time exactly how you want for the foods you ate at that time. Okay. Um, let's see, custom recipes, we're getting there. Uh, this is a fabulous program. Thank you so much, Norma. Um, program from my PCP. So, it, it, oh, actually, yes, it is. Uh, I will show you guys that in a little bit. So that's coming a little bit later. We have a nutri nutrition report feature and a print report feature. So you can actually do a whole lot more uh, with in terms of printing reports and maybe sharing it with your doctor or something like that. So I want to show you guys in the mobile app how to access all of these features. Um, so first, let's start with, so you'll, you'll see here we've got our, um, fasting widget, which will be enabled when you turn that on. Um, so if we go to, so right away, actually we'll start in settings, sorry. So we'll start with the diary groups. So we're gonna go down to general. We're gonna go to diary settings. And one of these uh, down here in diary groups, you can turn this on and you can then set up all the diary groups in the app like so. You can edit those thing, edit those titles as you want. You can also, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, you can also, if you have a device, so like a Fitbit or something that's importing data into Chronometer, uh, you can choose which uh, group that uh, that data will go into. Um, so that is, and you can also from here choose to turn on or turn off diary, uh, timestamps rather. Okay. Um, then what did we talk about? Let's see, so adding a note, so yeah. Adding a note or a picture to a note is pretty straightforward on the diary or on the uh, mobile app. You just have the icon here when you add a note. And also you can see you can choose your group and your timestamp here as well. On any, This is on any item that you're logging. Cool. Um, right. So then uh, let's go to, so actually one of the features that we don't have yet on the mobile app, which should be coming out soon, is the ability to create custom biometrics. You can do that on the web. If you do that on the web, your, any custom biometrics you create on your account will show up on the mobile app. So anything you do between the two accounts or the two platforms, I should say it's the same account, uh, will show up on either one. So you'll have to create just for now uh, your custom biometrics on the web app. Um, <laughs> cool. And yeah, so that's custom biometrics, uh, to get, uh, access to our suggest food, uh, feature. If you just tap the plus button, you're going to see suggest food here. So it's the UI is a little bit different. So I'll just show you guys real quick. You're going to get those suggestions. You're going to be able to swipe through one item at a time. And the function is pretty much the same. You can like a food, you can dislike a food, and it'll go away, won't get suggested again. And we'll keep serving you up different suggestions. Then uh, if I tap this three dot, the, oops, I'll show you, the three dot menu up here, uh, this is gonna take you to the options menu where you can choose your exclusions and your diet type. And that is food, suggest food suggestions on the mobile app. Another couple features with the, our diary groups, as you can see, I can actually contra uh, expand and contract the, um, or collapse the uh, diary group to make a little bit more space because you don't have as much on the, uh, on the mobile uh, side of things. You can also, uh, using this plus button here next to the diary group, you can tap that and you can get to the uh, uh, food search screen and just quickly add food. Whoops you can quickly add some food to your diary. Now, another trick you can do with the diary groups is I can swipe to the right on a diary group to reveal an additional menu. Now, in this menu, I have a couple options, one of which I showed you before, which is to create a recipe from the diary group. So this means every food that's in that diary group, you can create a recipe from. So I'll tap that. And now we're in that recipe editor on the mobile app, and you can see all the ingredients that were in that diary group or part of this recipe. And then you can just go on and create that recipe. And again, we'll get to that in a little more detail in just a second. So, um, oh, I just deleted everything in the group, whoops. Um, let me think, uh, is there anything else here that I want to show you guys? Oh yeah, so, so all, some of this additional data, so we're, we haven't done it yet. Nutrition scores is fairly new. 
And uh, this is now, uh, this is gonna be on the mobile app soon. So I think the next release or two, it should be up there. Uh, so it's not there right now, but you should see soon. Uh, with our, so if you tap on any of these um, uh, items in the widgets up top here, uh, you'll get this little summary section Then you can click on or tap on daily report and you're gonna get your daily nutrition report. That is all the macros, micros, all the information that you see at the bottom of the web app here. And then uh, at the very, very bottom, we're gonna see all the nutrient balances that I, I talked about earlier. So that's where you can find those, just at the very bottom of that screen. Okay, so anything else? Uh, let's see. Okay, so I think that about does it for the gold features on the diary for both the web and the mobile app. So what I wanna show you now is a little bit about the recipe editor. Before I do that, just gonna check the, the questions queue real quick. Um, let's see. It's possible. Oh, well, thank you so much, Norma, I appreciate that. Um, Question on sinking. I'll get to that one later. Um, do you have resources for a nutrient for nutrient targets based on diet type? So uh, this kind of gets a little close to um, uh, uh, personalized nutritional nutrition advice, but we do have like a general way to so take so take the ketogenic diet. The way you would be doing that um, is by using our ketogenic calculator. You can kind of get a sense of what you might need based on uh, the targets that you set. But honestly, like they're going to be different for everybody depending on your needs. And it's really hard for me to say what uh, specifically your targets should be for a particular diet. Um, that being said, one of the nutrition scores that or so a series of nutrition scores that we're going to be coming out with has to do with, you know, nutrients that are critical on a vegan diet, like the ones that might be harder to get. Likewise for a ketogenic diet, here are the nutrients that might be hard to get on a, a ketogenic diet. So we are gonna be able to clue, clue you in a bit as to what to focus on. But again, we can't really recommend specific targets for an individual. That's, uh, that's, for, you know, that's for the healthcare professionals to, um, to do. Glad you love the notes, Susie, that's awesome. Uh, let's see, Ari Linton. I'll have to look into them, Norma. I appreciate the suggestion though. Uh, how do I report inaccurate food label info? Great question. So I will show you guys how to do that real quick. So I'll show you on the mobile first because that's in my hand. Uh, if I tap on an item, um, so this is just you know where I had for some reason that's zero, but whatever. Uh, so if there's a three dot menu up here on any food item in our database, so all you have to do is tap that. You're going to get a little menu here, and it's going to be report issue. So you go ahead and do that, and what we'll ask you to do is you can describe the issue and then you can actually take photos of the uh, nutrition label and the packaging. And what this will do, it'll send all that data to our curation team, they'll review it. Uh, and if there's a legit error, we tend to correct it almost, you know, pretty quickly. Um, uh, you know, there's plenty of uh, that information coming through. So we try to deal with it, that as quickly as possible. Uh, and on the web, it's same deal. Um, you would just right click, on an item, view edit selected food. So now we're on that food information page. Go up to that three dot menu and report issue. Same deal, describe the issue, upload photos, and then you can report it to us. And we get that fixed as soon as we can. Cool. So uh, let's see, Mike, do 10 clients under pro account each have access? Yeah, so, so for our pro, for our pros who have clients, anyone who's on your list, for the duration that they're on that list, they will have all the gold features that I'm showing you today. That's right. Um, if you hire, yeah, Susie, so if you hire a pro who uses Chronometer Pro, uh, you, she can send you an invite. Uh, and if you accept that invite, she'll have access to your historical, all your historical data on the app. And then, you know, she can help, help you figure out what you might need. Uh, cool. Uh, that's awesome, Susie. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, right icon. So it depends, Susie. So when an error is corrected and you now have the photos, will this now be considered a best data with a red icon? So the way we actually distinguish red icons 
and I'll show you guys that so you have a visual reference here. On our food search results, there's red icons like this one, and there's also um, barcodes, and there's a few other icons, but the red icons are the ones that denote the highest quality data. Those come from lab-tested uh, foods. Um, yeah, you know, these labs are working on it, and they're putting out this data. Now, uh, the answer, uh, Susie, it depends. If the error was on one of these lab-tested foods, then yes. But most of the time, um, some of these errors are coming from foods that are you know, they have barcodes or storable, storable items with very little information on the um, nutrition label. So even though we have it corrected and we're happy with it, we won't say that this is a high quality data source because, uh, you know, again, we know that that information on the nutrition label is not complete. Like it has to be tested in the lab to really truly be complete. So, um, so we won't necessarily promote an item uh, from that type of data set to a higher quality one. Okay, how does the barcode box work? Oh, yeah, yeah, so, um, well, it depends. I'm not sure, oh, you might be talking about the recipe editor. So uh, the barcode, so what I would recommend, so the way we do our barcode scanner is, I, I should show you guys this real quick. Our barcode scanner is, it's a free, it's a free feature, but it's definitely worth pointing out. Um, so the way our barcode scanner works is you're gonna wanna use the mobile app. So you can see that I just scanned a barcode here and that was an item that's not gonna be on our food beta databases, the box of pens. So it's gonna say, hey, I didn't see this. Um, let me create a new item. So I can hit create new. And now what it's gonna ask me to do is take a picture of the nutrition label. So now I'm gonna use this photo. I'll just take a picture of the front one as well. Um, and now what's gonna happen is the app will read the text on the nutrition label pull it into the app so you guys can see. Now all that nutrition information is in, in the app. You don't have to actually enter it manually. So it's a great feature. If you have a barcode, if you have a food with a barcode, I highly, highly recommend just using our mobile app. Use the barcode scanner. It'll be like a breeze. And then you can, once you save the food, you name it, you can, um, you can use it, you can log it immediately. And even better is when you, when you save it, it'll get sent to us to verify so that everybody else can use it. If it passes our standards, of course. Um, yeah, so let's see what else we got here. Uh, barcode box work. Uh, the barcode to add custom food. I think I answered that one. Does the barcode only work with smartphones? Yeah, so we don't have a barcode scanner for the web app. Uh, it's just kind of an awkward implementation, so we haven't done that yet. <clears throat> um, you can, so you can't actually scan anything on the web. You can enter that in if you want, if you, but you'd have to enter all that stuff in manually. Again, I'd highly recommend just doing the, um, the mobile app. Uh, oh, she flipped phone. Oh, if the phone has a camera, you might be able to do it. I, I don't know what the state of the, the, flip phone, the flip phone technology is at the moment, Norma. Um, cool. So, all right, that's questions. Uh, I'll get back to the ones up top here. Okay, so I wanna show you guys uh, the recipe editor and how to create meal plans, because this is a great feature that not you know, may, many people think of, uh, but it's an awesome planning tool if you are working with, um, uh, you know, if you're planning out your diet and trying to stick to a program, it keeps it, and it makes logging food every day super easy. So, what it looks like, we'll start with just basics of creating a custom recipe. So you go to the foods, custom recipe tab here. And we're just gonna go ahead and add a recipe. So the first thing you see here, you can name it, you can uh, create a, uh, you can uh, put it in a category. So if it's a certain food type, you can pick from the categories here, not required. Um, you can also tag it. So if it's vegetarian friendly, if it's vegan friendly, you can uh, tag it with a few different tags here. Uh, you can also add some notes. So if there's any preparation instructions, you can add those here. Um, barcodes, not really a thing for custom recipes, but it's here in case you're doing uh, something with a, a packaged meal service. Now, serving sizes is the first one that we'll spend some time on. You can create a couple different serving sizes here. You can name them. And what these will do is actually divide up the total recipe into parts uh, according to the servings per recipe number that you put here. So this is one half and maybe uh, you know, a quarter. So that'd be four. 
And so what will happen here is as I add some ingredients, so some bananas, uh, bananas go good with peanut butter, um, maybe a little oatmeal. Cool, so now I have some ingredients added in, and adding ingredients is just as simple as searching food. So that's a pretty straightforward thing. <clears throat> but now that you have some ingredients, they each have a weight, then we have an idea of all the nutrition for all the ingredients. And so that's what we show down here. We show all the nutrition for the full recipe. But now I can actually click this and choose which serving size I wanna see the nutrition for. So maybe I want a quarter. So that's 54 grams as opposed to the full recipe. And I see all the nutrition for that, um, for that serving size. So now I can save that and then I can go log that. It'll show up in my custom foods tab, which is again, that's part of our basics webinar, just how to create that stuff and see it. Um, but once I have a custom recipe created, I can actually take it a step further and I can create, so I'll click on this one here, dinner one. No thanks. Um, dinner one consists of three different custom recipes that I created that I've put into another custom recipe. So now instead of just an item that I can create with some instructions, I have a whole meal comprised of other food items. I can take that a step further and say, well, if I create a breakfast, a lunch, a dinner, maybe some snacks, maybe the daily supplements I take every day, I can group all those up and then I can go and do something like this. I can create a meal plan day one and then I could put in my dinner, my lunch, my breakfast, and now I've created a single item that if I log to my diary, I'm gonna get all my nutrition information for the day in one, one search. Um, <clears throat> Okay, sorry, one second before we do that. Uh, so a little confused about serving sizes for custom recipes. Is it possible to simply indicate the number of servings for a custom recipe? Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, I, you, you totally can do that. So if it's, um, so for example, uh, you know, if, if you know you're doing, a, I don't know, a, um, if you're making a pie, you know, it has eight slices. You can just put in, you know, slices. How many, how many slices? Eight. You know, that, that's all it is. It, it's totally subjective. It's up to you how you want to divide up the recipe, uh, but you can do that if you want. So that's all it is. I just use a half a quarter because it's very, very literal. <laughs> and I can uh, show you guys what that, what it'll actually do. So just back to the meal plans. Now that I have the, um, now that I have all my meals actually logged into a single day, I can go back to the diary jump forward to a day that I haven't logged anything for. Now I can plan out, depending on how many meal plans I've put together, I can plan out my week if I want to. So I go to add food, I can search meal. Oops, meal. Um, I can also go to my custom tab, uh, which will also show me my custom foods, in this case, the ones that I've searched meal plan. So I'll click meal plan day one, I'll add it. And now, like I said, here's all my nutrition information filled out for me. Uh, in one go. Now, it's not necessarily clear what I'm eating though, because the food item here is just a single item. Now, if I were to right click on that item, and I could click explode recipe, it's gonna break up that meal plan into its component meals. Then all I have to do is drag and drop, oops, breakfast. I can drag and drop all the, uh, all the things to the various spots or the template that I've laid out for myself. And then I can explode each of those recipes to see exactly what it is that I'm eating. And there you go. Cool. So now you have a whole day's worth of eating planned out in almost like less than a minute. And so if you front load that effort and you put together a plan and you, you, you do things with the meal planner and the recipe editor, man, it's so low effort to actually log food every day. And then all you have to do if, I mean, maybe you didn't eat the, the cantaloupe for breakfast, you can just delete that out or edit some of the amounts here. You, anything, uh, anything you need to do to adjust or, is actually much easier. Oops. Okay. Um, oh, thank you so much, uh, Michael. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so water and hydration. So you can actually track that just as well. So 
Uh, it is one of the items that shows up in, under our general tab. You can see what your target is. It's in grams, which is a little strange, but um, I think we're changing that to fluid ounces. Um, and if you really wanted to, you can put that up. I don't think that, yeah. So actually you can put it up in your highlighted nutrient targets here too, to make sure that you're getting enough water every day. Um, yeah, so actually Mike, so one of the things you can do if we were doing the pro webinar, what I would show you next after you've created these meal plans is how to share those meal plans with your clients. And so what you can actually do is you can give them specific meal plans that only they can use and then you can actually you can either log it for them or just let them know hey i created these meal plans for you just pick one every day or week or whatever and make sure you have the food for them and so yeah that's 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 what i would show you if we were doing the pro webinar so you should come tomorrow i will post that up in the chat before we leave uh just towards the end uh the link to register that is cool so just to put a pin in it on the mobile app I want to show you guys what that looks like. So uh, the recipe editor, actually I'll do, I'll do this. So we're in lunch here. I'll do the create recipe from group. Now here's my lunch. Seven, let's call it. So now I have all my items. I just go to next. I can create the serving sizes here. I can create a new serving size, whatever that might be. I won't spend a ton of time on that. Then I can go to the uh, new recipe. I can add those preparation instructions if they are relevant category. And then I get to see all the nutrition information for those items and I'll save that recipe. And then if I go to foods, I can view all of my recipes here and I can create new ones. I can go, I can create a food and um, do it that way. And yeah, same deal. Oh, and as a matter of fact, let's say, I don't know if I have this. Let's go here. Yeah, so here's a custom food item on the mobile. If you swipe to the right on an individual item and it's custom recipe and tap that item or tap that three dot menu there, you're gonna get the explode recipe option right up top here. And uh, you'll be able to then see the ingredients on the mobile app. Cool. Very good. So um, now we're gonna move on. Let me see, I'll just check some questions. Looks like we're doing pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah, you can, Susie, you can absolutely um, join us for the pro webinar um, if you want. Uh, like I said, when I have, I, um, it's only me today, so I will post that in the chat uh, just before we finish up. So anybody who wants the links to the basics webinar and the, um, the pro webinar, you can come and join us whenever. So, but I'll get to that towards the end. So uh, let's see, so now we're gonna jump to, um, let me just clear out this questions queue. Yeah, uh, Susie, the, the links to the webinars are the same each week. So you can always use the one that I, um, that I send out to register for future events as well. So uh, we're gonna go to the Trends tab now to talk about the gold features that we offer um, in terms of our data analysis tools. So we're gonna go over to Manage Charts here and then we'll get to some explanations. So we have a number of charts in our library that are just there for you. you can, once you are gold, you can turn most of these on. You only get the first two here on your free account. Uh, but you can create these or you can turn these on but if there's something here that you don't see that you want to chart you can actually create any number of custom charts as well so that is pretty powerful actually you can create two you can graph two variables against each other to see how they relate so you can look at any biometric any nutrient that we track or any of the scores that i showed you before so your immune support uh you know electrolytes all those kinds of things and so if you, so here I could see all of my, all of the ones we support and any of the custom biometrics that I um, have created on this account. And then you could pick a nutrient from all of the, the many, 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 many nutrients that we track. And I'll show you what those look like in just a sec. So once you have that stuff set up, you'll actually be able to see that in the charts page. 
uh, you can scroll down here and you're going to be able to see all that information. Now, uh, the first of our newer chart, our gold charts, is the nutrient chart. You can actually see whenever an individual nutrient is actually in that target. And this is a daily average, so uh, it's not time stamped per se because we take all that data from the day and use it to plot here. Um, likewise for our scores, so here's that immune support. And you can change that to whatever you like. It can be a custom range. It can be any time frame, really. Uh, someone was asking about the glucose ketone index. So what that is, um, this is just a, a, um, a chart that we uh, worked with a medical, some medical uh, professionals to develop. And it's just, it's a way they use the, um, the ratio between your blood glucose and your ketones to tell whether or not you're in a therapeutic range. And it really is used for, um, you know, managing conditions like cancer or seizures and things like that. So, um, so yeah, so that's what that chart's for. Um, and here are some of my custom charts. You can see how you can get a sense of how the data might relate as you're changing things, um, you know, uh, and you can get a sense of what that looks like over time. Very cool. And for data that is timestamped, so here's our weight chart. You can see, I don't know, it's a little small. I don't know if it'll zoom in. You can see the timestamp on the actual data there. All right. Then we have our nutrition report. I don't think there's anything, uh, any gold features on here per se. I think you might get longer time frames. Um, but just to review, this is the, looks a lot like the diary page. You can get, um, you can, you can get a sense of your longer term nutritional averages here where you may be deficient over time. And if you're hitting those averages or the targets over uh, a longer period of time, just in general, that's what's more important, being consistent over time with your nutrition. Um, so this is the place to look for that information. Uh, I'm going to jump to snapshots before print report. So this is another place you can actually upload photos. Um, it could be progress photos. It could be pretty much any content you might want to see. Um, and then the print report tab here is going to be uh, the, someone was asking about printing out pages or something like that. You can actually go here to print out pretty much any data that we have uh, in the app. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn everything on and I'll give you an idea of what we print out. And this can all be customized here so you can kind of play with the options. But I'm going to go ahead and hit print report. And what it does is it spits out this report here that you can then print to a PDF. So then you can either print it out or you can send it via email. Um, you can check it out here. You get your nutrition report. That is the nutritional averages over a longer period of time. Uh, you have your individual daily diary food logs and the daily nutrient reports. So this is the day-to-day -day stuff. Um, I think, oh, and actually, I don't think I had these here, hang on. You can also enable charts, which I did not do. Let me do that again. Uh, you can also enable charts, and so then you can have any of the charts that we support uh, show up here as well. And you'll notice that there is this darkened area on these charts. These charts have the fasting periods enabled. So you can see, when you're actually fasting. And like I said, I have like a constant fast running on this account. So you can see that um, whenever that area is darkened up, that is this time, time frame that you were fasting. And so to do that, actually I should show you how to do that on the charts. Jump to charts, there's a three dot menu on all the charts. And it's gonna say show fast, show fast period. Oh, hey, little one. <laughs> Sorry, my daughter decided to barge in. Um, so anyway, uh, show fast period. You click that and then you're going to get a visual representation of when you were fasting. And so you can see what that looks like. Um, and then finally, uh, oh yeah, so that's print reports. Um, finally, there's a few other features that I want to show you guys. Now we, wow, we're real, real low on time. Um, that I want to show you guys. I'll, oh, and I'll also mention the charts on our mobile app are fully functional. You can see all of that information here you get all of our charts that you get on the web. Now, these aren't pretty, but what you can do is I can tap on one of these and you'll see all the options and all that kind of stuff are at the bottom. But what I can do is actually turn the view to the side 
and you're going to get a nice landscape view of your chart and then you can you can go in there you can expand you can contract you can see all the data points um as you uh go through um <laughs> trying to sneak in again um so anyway you can you can get a good view of the charts on the mobile app too so it's actually very uh, it's a very feature rich there um so that is that Let me knock that out and then, uh, let's see, then on the, what else was I going to show you? Okay, yeah, so, so a couple other features that I want to show you before we run out of time, and I do want to get to the rest of your questions. I'll stick around for as long as I need to. Um, we have on the devices page, uh, these, this is where all, you can sync your devices, you can uh, sync uh, to Apple and uh, Google Fit, though you need to do that on the mobile app. Um, sharing, oh yeah, sharing, so this is the one I was forgetting. Sharing is a feature that allows gold accounts to share all of their custom recipes with uh, other gold or free accounts. So if you, this is really good for families. So if you have a family, you're all eating the same thing, maybe you have built some meal plans for your kids, you can actually share those meal plans, share those foods by inviting a uh, existing chronometer account as a friend. So all you'd have to do is to, uh, first of all, the person would have to have a, uh, a chronometer account. You'd have to know the email of that chronometer account, and then you just add a friend here. And once you did that, you'd have, uh, you, you'd have access to each other's custom recipes. Uh, so yeah, so that's a great way for, for uh, you know, having an accountability partner, just keeping uh, the family coordinated on what to eat without having to build all those recipes over and over per account. Um, so yeah, I think that, okay, so we're at, we're at the end of the hour. I wanna jump through these questions here if you guys have anything else. Yep, that's right, thank you. You wanna come say hi? <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump through the questions here. So uh, Susie, I think, uh, so you were asking about the, um, uh, the ketones, explaining ketones. Uh, this is, Oh, so yeah, so that's one of the biometrics that we track. I wasn't sure if you were talking about blood ketone index. Uh, if you go to add biometrics, there are a number of different, ooh, just got logged out. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, oh, and this is our 2FA uh, feature in action here. So let me see if I can find that. Uh, yep, there we go. We just have to log back in with our code here. Two, six, eight. Oh, see you later. Cool. So, um, yeah, so the ketones, there's a couple of ways you can track those things. You, the, the, you can usually use a, uh, the P-strips. Uh, there's, there are breath analyzers and there are blood analyzers as well. So it depends on what you have and how you want to, how you want to do that. Um, and so, uh, you would log those things manually. It's just one of the biometrics that we track. So you can see, let's see. Yeah, there's ketones blood. It's just a matter of entering in the amount that you want to log. Okay, uh, playing with Oracle, can I save lists or print the list? I actually don't know if we have an explicit print uh, option there. I don't think we do. I'm just going to hit search. Um, no, so it doesn't look like you can actually print those out. Although it's pr it's fairly easy just to say uh, take a screenshot and you can get that list there um, if that's something you wanted to do. Uh, but yeah, no, it doesn't look like we have an explicit print option. Great suggestion. You snuck that one in there. Good job. Um, all data be, oh yes, sure. So uh, another thing you can do on the charts as a matter of fact, and so uh, let me see, not on the diary. So in the, uh, trends, you can export data to a CSV or XLS. So you can put it, put all that data into a spreadsheet and then you can do additional statistical analysis on that. So on a pro account, you can actually export, Mike, I know you were asking about pro earlier, you can actually export everything. So, so you will have an option on any client that you're working with to export all their data. So all their food data, all their notes data, anything pretty much in their account, you can pull out and put it in a spreadsheet to do some additional analysis with, yes. Cool. Alrighty, and then, uh, so Susie, I think I explained, I, I hope I explained the ketones uh, uh, satisfactory. Um, 
if, if not, just let me know or email uh, customer support. Uh, we'll get you a clear answer on that. Uh, yep, so we don't print there. Uh, I answered the fasting question. We did custom recipes. Uh, so if anybody feels their question, if, you, if anyone still has questions or feels I didn't answer the question that they did ask, just go ahead and post up again. I will uh, stick around and get that done. Um, cool, I showed you how to print reports. Uh, syncing apps, uh, Apple Watch and thought it's supposed to automatically upload, but it isn't. Um, hmm. So day to day, it should automatically update. Uh, we have a backfill function that that's what that calendar button is for. Um, I'm not sure they may be, there may be a bug with the backfill. Um, so I will check with customer support to see what's what uh, you've already contacted them. So I'll just see if they can get back to you on that. Thanks Susie. Uh, right, I will look into Alex Leaf. Uh, Trends is on the phone too, I showed that. <laughs> Thank you very much, I appreciate that. She is pretty cute, um, just like her dad. Uh, let's see, oh yeah, okay, thank you guys. Uh, I will, let me, I just gotta take a second to grab the links and then I'll post the links to our other webinars up in the chat, give you a minute to grab them and then I will uh, uh, sign off for the day. So give me just a second guys. Oh, no problem, Susie. I am glad to do this. It's a lot of fun. I like talking to you guys and showing you guys how awesome the app is. So here is our, yeah, that was that. Here's our pro webinar. That one's tomorrow, Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard. Um, Next week, we're actually varying the times a bit. We're going to do, uh, we're going to have uh, Mary Eve run the webinar. They're going to be a little bit later. So um, I think it'll be 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So uh, you guys will have some options there. So that's the pro webinar. Um, let me just do, let me label it best I can in this chat. Okay, that's pro. And then uh, let me get you guys the basics. This is the basics. So if you guys want to join us, uh, you can learn more about Pro. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, and then you, you can also you can also learn more about the just the basics of chronometer. This is stuff like just simply logging food, getting the most data. We'll talk more about those red icons, what they mean, and things like that. So, um, yeah, pro is Thursdays at the same time. Like I said, though, Susie, we are next week. We're actually starting to switch up the schedule. So they're going to be a little later in the uh, afternoon, depending on, or evening, depending on what time zone you're in. So, but it'll, when you try to register, it'll show you what the time is. So it should, should be all, all good. So, uh, guys, thank you so much. Uh, there will be a survey at the end. I really, really would appreciate um, uh, you guys taking some time, giving me some feedback. And yeah, I really hope you guys get the most out of your gold subscription, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. All right, guys.